class on the Nikon D850. This is a beautiful camera. It has all the speed, it has all its quality. How do you make the most out of it? That's video. All the great fun this camera can bring and get the most quality. So make sure to check it out exclusively here on Kelby One. Hey, Rick Simon here. I am so excited to tell you about mastering the art and craft of bird photography. I'll teach you how to stop action for tack sharp shots and how to blur action for perhaps a more creative image. But this is so cool. When I'm talking about shooting at the lowest possible ISO to get the cleanest possible shot, I'm not talking about the lowest setting, it's the lowest possible setting. So I wanted a fast shutter speed here. I'll talk about the importance of capturing a bird's gesture, which can make or break a shot. And of course, I'll cover cameras, lenses, and accessories. You don't need to bring like 50 lenses to tell the story. This is all about storytelling. I've seen so many beautiful sunrises and the sky was filled with thousands of birds. Now this is a very comprehensive class. So if you want to learn a lot about bird photography, check out my class only on KelbyOne.com. to create images, family images that are meaningful and artistic and full of connection, you really need to have the skills necessary to execute a really good family session workflow. You need to be able to connect with the family. So you need to be able to be yourself, let your guard down, and allow yourself to really have fun with it and interact with your family. I think anybody who wants to embark in family photography um, is going to benefit from this class. But even if you've been a family photographer for a while, it's going to show you a different way of looking at family photography. My hope is that you will have a fresh perspective on family photography after looking at this class. And that that will really help you um, set yourself apart from your peers and stand out in a saturated industry. I'm Elena S. Blair. Come check out my class on family photography on kelbyone.com. Today on The Grid, we are doing blind photo critiques. We've got some cool giveaways. My guest is legend of love, Jeff Leinbach, and it all starts in just 60 seconds. The Grid is brought to you by Tamron. Check out their 28 to 75 millimeter f2.8 lens. It's for Sony full frame mirrorless. It's awesome. Go to tamron-usa.com. And Westcott, check out their new rapid box switch. It has nine light modifiers and 13 quick swap light inserts. Check it out right now at fjwestcott.com. And Profoto, the light shaping company. Enter their contest. You might win a Profoto B1 kit worth over $2,800. And Platinum. Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a platypod. You should too. Go to platypod.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another live episode of The Grid. My name is Scott Kelby, and I'm joined by a very special man. <laughs> this is our good friend and our colleague photographer. Now, if you recognize me, you go, wow, he looks familiar. You've been on the grid before? I have not. No, this is your first grid? This is my first grid. No, I thought you were a grid veteran. No, 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 no. I'm well, it's Jeff Leinbach, veteran. everybody. Good to have See, you here, you, you wouldn't have asked me if you hadn't known that, right? I said no, that I, I didn't have any grid experience. Are you serious? I have, I'm dead serious. I didn't give you the grid prep talk. No, you the, didn't. All right, we have to start the show over. I didn't realize. I swear, we'll be I back thought, in one. No, just run the, just run the, um, run the thing again. Run the opener. So, Jason, just run the. Well, I got. I, I, I didn't prep him for the show. I didn't know. I swear, I thought you'd been on here before. No, I've done other stuff with you, but I never know. This. God, you done. I know. That's all right. Run the okay. opener. It's only ten seconds. It's ten seconds. Go ahead. I want to tell you the secret <laughs> to being a great guest on the grid.
Man, that was a long <laughs> 10 seconds. That's, Good. Was that Goodness only 10? gracious. Jeez, it was like I, 45. I know. I just took a nap. I'm going to wake up here. All right. Well, anyway, right. glad to have you here. Thank you. So if you recognize Jeff, you may recognize him from Photoshop World. Or uh, Jeff was on the road with me for many years with our seminar uh -huh. tour. And we've just done all kinds of stuff with Jeff. And Jeff's awesome. He's a really good photographer. And you've run workshops for years and stuff? Yeah, done done a lot of different things. Yeah. Yeah, workshops. Uh, graphic design. Graphic design. <laughs> yeah, a lot of different things. Yeah. I still do a lot of graphic design work. Look um, at you. Yeah, seriously. I do a lot of shooting, too. All right. So well, a lot today, of things in the works. Today we're going to do blind photo critiques. We're going to look at uh, images sent in from our viewers. And uh, we're going to give our honest opinions on them. And we're going to, uh, uh, the idea behind the thing of the be being blind, for those of you who are just, knows, the reason they're blind critiques, we don't want to embarrass anybody. We just mm -hmm. want to be able to give a, a real critique without hurting anyone's feelings or publishing embarrassing anyone. So um, let's get started. Ready to go? Yeah. All right, let's take a look at our first one. Now, we asked people to send us three of their images. And so we'll, we'll look at the three and then we'll kind of, uh, you know, give, give a little look here. So here's the first one. And these are all from the same photographer. Second one. And uh, third one, and it looks like Prague, a little Prague Rooney. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, this photographer knows their light, don't they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> These are all beautiful shots. And one of the reasons they're so beautiful, besides the fact that this is a very good photographer, is they're all shot in beautiful light. This, these would have to be Dawn. That has to be Dawn. You know what it has to be Dawn? Why? There's nobody on the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're, well, okay. Yeah. So this Makes is the, the, I guess it's the Charles Bridge or the St. Charles Bridge or whatever. But uh, what a great sky. And you know what I love about this picture? You talk about a, this, this picture you could use in a class on leading lines for composition. Absolutely. Right? Yep. Look at the, I love the two yellow lights on the edge. Kind the of statues. frames it in. Yeah. It frames it in and leads you right down the path. Yeah. And then at the end of the path, it's bright. Right. Like this is this is a beautifully done shot. So and, on that on that shot. Oh yes. So what I what I like about it, it it leads you to the center and we always say maybe not center things. But look how he just put that center line right below the center line. His yep. his horizon line is right below that center line which would make it a little more awkward. Um, it's just it's just great placement. Beautiful shot. I also like their point their point of view the low the low angle. Yes. The low angle's nice. Yep. We have something that we're giving away today that might help you with low angle photography, by the way. Um, but uh, this one's nice too. You know what? You know what it is about a silhouette to me. I, I've always thought for a silhouette to be a success, it has to be very clear what this thing is. True. Like if it's a horse up on the thing and you can say, "Ooh, it's a horse." If you have to go, "What is that?" It's it kills the silhouette. Right. But this is obviously you know city skyline and it's an old city skyline. I think this is this is beautifully done. I like I like silhouettes that you can actually see through I know, the silhouette. Right? When you have windows and things that that bring that light through uh, through that silhouette portion, it just uh, it works. Look, and there's one more here. There we go. Yes, this is just gorgeous. Look at the sky and look at the water and just this uh, this photographer. They they just they're doing it all right. So long so, exposure. So this one. I have to go back to uh, my dear friend Dave Black's comments. This is a, um, a trifecta of thirds. So you've got the foreground, middle ground, background. You've got left to right. You've got depth. Everything working in thirds. And then the, the uh, triangles. Look how many triangles you can pick out of, that, uh, out of that picture. Oh, yeah. This is like, I don't know who the photographer is, but... From Jeff and I, yeah. well done. Well Great done. start to the show. It can only go downhill from here. Yeah, no, not... I'm just kidding, just kidding. All right, good. Let's take a look and see what else we got here. Let's, uh, we have an, a lot of people sent in uh, images. Of course, we won't get to nearly. Um, oh, by the way, can I, just, can I say something about that? Um, I do want to mention that we do get a lot of entries. And, and when I get them, can we show my screen again? Can we just show my screen real quick? That's what they look like. I don't know anybody's names. I have no idea who they are. Mm -hmm. Every time we do any kind of critique, whether it's a website critique or whatever, it just says a number, folder one, folder two, 40, 50. And then I narrow it down to like 20, you know, that we might get to. So, oh, in this case, maybe 30. But, the, so I don't ever know, because some people go, well, you never pick my pictures. I, 
I may bring, I never, I don't know what pictures are yours. <laughs> uh, how could I possibly know? So I just get them as numbers. Um, all right, let's look at a couple more and then we're going to look at, get some comments here. Let's go over here and see what we've got. Well, those are nice. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm not personally a wildlife guy. I'm not a big, that's why I always tell people, they go, so, uh, hey, do you want to go on this wildlife shoot? I'm always like, yeah, no. And they're like, <laughs> I go, have you ever seen my wildlife photography? They're like, no. I go, there's a reason. There's a reason, right? Um, I do love this tree. That tree is awesome. It's epic. It's right on the verge of being over-processed, but the, <laughs> they stopped. But it's, it's right on the edge. It's standing on the doorway of over-processing. I but, agree. But it, it's just, I, if you could back that off a little, I think you'd be in great shape. Uh, this one, I think, is, is really nice. I, I, would, I would almost go a little tighter because this over here is kind of all the area of, to the right. A lot of blank space. A lot of blank space. Yeah. I think you might be able to. Now, I'm going to see. This might not work. Jump into camera raw here. Let's just see if I can do anything. You could get a little tighter because that space over. Now, there is one thing that they did right. You want to leave space in front of the animal. Yeah, you, you, want don't, to, you want him looking into the frame, right. which, is, which is great. Yeah. Keep that. But there's just a, a little too much junk over there. So I th I, that's, that's somewhat better. But, I mean, it's not like, you, you know. You could even crop a little more off the, off the head just a little bit. Yeah. Maybe a little bit. But. Yeah. But anyway, it's a, it's a nice yeah, shot. It's, it's, a nice it's shot. not bad. And Nice focus. This one, this is tough. Because here, here's what I would do, and it's not going to be easy. You've got a wonderful moment here, Right. I would go through there and I would take out all those weeds in front of the, uh, what are those? Those are? Those are leopards. Are they leopards? I think so. Yeah. In front Aren't of they? the leopards. Are we wrong? I have no, dude, I, I'm, you're asking the last guy <laughs> of what, that's like walking no. to the vegetable <laughs> aisle and go, what is this vegetable called? Oh, this is, like, this I don't know. This is going downhill quick. No, they're leopards. Those are leopards. Yeah. I'm I would take to it. the time to get rid of <laughs> most of those, of those weeds. And you could do it with a very small healing brush. It'd take you 30 minutes. It'd be so worth it. So but anyway, my, my eye went to those first. I mean, that's that just that's the first thing I looked at, um, saw, and my eyes stuck to it. And then it took me a second before I could get to the actual yeah. look. Yeah. But there's a great image hidden in those weeds. Uh, and this is beautiful. So it's on the verge of overprocessed pull back, but but great job. We're off to a good start. Yeah, nice, we are. Nicely done. Let's look at another one. I thought this would be more challenging than this, Scott. We haven't got to the challenging oh, ones. Okay. These are, they, it's very easy when they're really good. Right. You know, when yeah. they're good. No, that's it's true. when they're not good, it's it's a yeah. it's a, a much harder critique to do. Let's look at these three images. We can do here. it though. We're up for All it. All right, so let's take a look. We have one, okay, two, three. Okay. Well, the the lighting is actually pretty good. Uh, I like what they're doing. They're going for that sports look. And the drama. I mean, it's, yeah. it's got drama Black in. Black background yep. and stuff. Um, the only thing, especially the last one, there's a, there's a lighting issue and, and there's a bigger issue. Because the, the lighting on all of these is, is fine. This one, I think, is, is clearly the best lit. Mm -hmm. This one is, her face is a little dark. A little and dark. here, his face. Uh, yeah, well, I can't see his eyes. So from where I'm sitting. Yeah, he's, um, he's way dark. I, yeah, we need, to, we need to see, I would, see I would, his eyes. I would just brighten those in post a little bit. But the, bi yep. the bigger problem is he's in a terribly unflattering pose. And he, he, he looks like the caption should be, I, I just lost. I lost the match. I think and, you're right. And that's not, I think, how you would want to show him. I think you would want to put him in some kind of a good fighting stance or uh, uh, what do you call it? I wonder it? I if they just came off of a, a match or something because he, even his uniform's pretty messed up. Yeah, his uniform isn't great. He to be Look how nice out. and snappy hers looks and all. And, and she's got a very like a very positive, like, look, you know, she's mm -hmm. standing up straight and her head's up and, you know, uh, but I would love to see uh, them not in such a, my, my helmet's under my arm. Everybody's got the helmet. It's, it's yeah. kind of, you know, and also, be, especially because in martial arts, when you, when you are ready to spar and they have gloves on, you're not going to spar straight onto somebody. You're going to spar, you know, with your body angled. Your you know. body angle, right. Exactly. So I think your body angle would be more flattering and, and would make the things look a little more aggressive. And you know what? With martial arts, there's so many poses that you could do that aren't, 
that aren't corny. I mean, you don't want to do the the, the outstretched fist right. kind of thing. That would be a bit, you know, the one that where you you always see that shot, you know. But but if you could uh, turn turn the body sideways, you know, get mm -hmm. the guard up or something, and that, but not for every shot. But those are three shots that are the same. I think that's why he stands out so poorly. Mm -hmm. Could be because look at him. I wouldn't. I wouldn't versus... even mind seeing them with their helmets on. That might be kind oh, of yeah. Kind of cool. Yeah. Now. Well, the head headgear, right? I just would like oh, they to see her chin helmet down. Size, just just headgear, yeah. Yeah, her her chin here. Chin up problem. I, I like the, the aggressiveness. Cabbage, yeah. Cabbage, proper. I like I like that, but it, her head is a little too little, little, little high. high. Yeah, yeah good a little high. But good lighting. I like where you're going with it. The last thing I would say is make sure that the brightest thing, like our eyes, are drawn to their face. They're on a black background, in white outfits, and a lot of the light is landing right here. Mm -hmm where you want to look at their face. So look at her, her chest in that area. It's really bright right there. And her face is, you, you wanna make sure her face is lit. I would dampen down the, uh, so look at down below her belt. Um, that's, that's lit nicely. And then it gets too bright as it goes up. Mm -hmm. It should yep. gradually go up, but it's a little too bright. But uh, these are all nitpicking. I think, I think you're on your way. This is minor stuff, but I think these things would, would, would make a nice difference. So let's uh, let's see if we can get one more in before the break. Oh, now I like this. I don't oh, know, you know, I, I'm, that's up my alley. I do like this. I like them a lot too. You know what this is? This is just this is nice, nice composition for architecture. A lot of people just go, "Oh, look," and they kind of aim at something. But well, look, the, look how careful he was. Yeah, look, here. Look at the rivets. Oh, well, look at look at all of them. So look at that one. And look at the how he lined up the top of the frame with the with yeah. the bridge. He was very careful. Who she? Um, this person was very careful uh, how they line that up, and it's it's very nice. I'm I'm a stickler for that. I uh, I shoot a lot of architecture, so my lines are usually straight with something like this. And yeah. you get into other subjects, I and I, I twist everything. I saw some of the shots you did of that hospital, that beautiful hospital in Orlando. On oh, the Moore's Children's yeah, Hospital. Yeah, yeah, dude, you did a nice job. Thanks. Anyway, uh, but this is a good, good job. Mm -hmm. This, I think, is the weakest of the three. Agreed. Uh, I, I think you could have gone wide with these like you did with these and given us a little more to see. Uh, but, but I think, I mean, still, that's the weakest of the three, but yeah, I, I like the way you're thinking. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can tell these are, like you said, carefully, carefully thought out. I'm, would you, Jeff, this is just, would you get rid of this thing over here in the corner? This yes. Thing? Right there. Well, okay. So there's two two schools of thought on that. So we get rid of that, and all of a sudden we've got a big a big white area that might lead us or lead our eye off the page. That kind of stops your eye. So uh, well. it could stay or go. I think it can work either way. Interesting. See. Oh. All right. Well, we got it. We got another one in. We're gonna take a short break. Uh. Oh. Oh. Hey, I want to mention before we go to break. Um, I'm going to be very soon in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, at the Washington, D.C. Convention Center doing my full day of Lightroom training. Okay. Come on out and spend the day with me. It is Friday, August 17th, so you, like, take off work. Then you get, like, a three-day weekend. We'll hang out. We'll <laughs> learn Lightroom. It's going to be a blast. And I'm also working with the Library of Congress. It's not a done deal yet, but trying to get a photo shoot in there for my book. Wow. So. I had lunch in there one time. Did you? Oh, yeah. A lot of books there? A lot of books there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I thought there might yeah. be. Anyway, but uh, come out and check. Go to KelbyOneLive.com and spend the day with me learning Lightroom in Washington. We're going to take a short break. We've got lots more images. we got some shout outs. We're going to talk about our giveaways and a whole lot more. And we're going to drink. Yeah. A drink.
This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b &H Photo, the professional source since 1973. Don't forget to subscribe to The Grid. You can subscribe through Apple's podcast app or directly on iTunes on your computer. You can listen to the audio-only version or the regular video version, which features, well, the beauty of us. So, you know, do the regular version. Hey, we're glad to have you guys back. Just want to mention real quick, uh, there's a ProPhoto giveaway. So we are partnering with ProPhoto. They're giving away a B1X, an air remote, and a soft light reflector. Okay. It is a $2,400, more than $2,400 package. And all you have to do to, to, to get in the contest is just go and enter. So you could win. You never know. Go to bit.ly, go bit.ly slash win pro photo and you could win so the drawing is like 10 days i think i'll do that do you have some uh, pro eligible? photo gear i do i just got some pro photo how gear. you like it i haven't had a chance to use it yet you're <laughs> but gonna, you're gonna like it I, yeah. I feel like you're gonna like it i'm gonna like I it feel i feel like you're gonna like it all right we have some giveaways today on the show yep. uh i got a new thing i got a new thing ready it's brand new it's so new i'm just seeing that right now here we go ready how do they do that in Lightroom Classic, the second edition? Oh, my gosh. One of, one of my best-selling books ever. The, last, the original version went to print seven times. They ran out of seven print runs. Seven print runs, and I updated the whole thing with all the new stuff in Lightroom and new techniques and new cool stuff and my current workflow. And you know what? It's on press now, but the ebook version came out today. So you could... Go buy the ebook version on Amazon, or you can wait until the print version comes out, which will be very soon, or maybe you'll win it today on the grid. How do I do that in Lightroom Classic? Second edition. Cool. I just wanted you to think the screen had frozen. <laughs> it did All right. Freeze. What else do we hey, got? Can, can I do a shout out to my, oh, yeah, to my daughter, out, Sarah bro. Leinbach? Who says hi, Dan? You're doing watching? great. That's sweet. She's watching. All right. How about that? Hi, Sarah. Oh, I look in the camera when I say that. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah. Don't look at the screen. Don't look at the screen. No. All right. Maybe Sarah will win a fifty dollars gift card <laughs> from Lens Pro to Go. So the next time you want to like buy a lens or something, you might win fifty dollars off the fifty dollars gift card right here. Also, the fabulous, the wonderful, the magnificent Victoria Pavlov, who is a Photoshop World Instructor, an amazing digital artist. Mm -hmm. She's an author, and she's going to give away a coupon today for a one-hour one-on-one online class with her. Wow. Like an hour, you share a screen, and she'll teach you anything you want. That gum. That's like the greatest gift ever. I love that. So some lucky person will win that today. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I hope you're sitting down <laughs> because we're going to give away a glorious platypod. Now, I'm trying to find the angle at which you can be best seen. Put it flat on your hand, I think. Platypod. Well, we have such a busy background back there, yeah, you know. that's true. Anyway, this is what you use instead of a tripod, and nobody will bother you. I use this for low angles. Remember I said the mm -hmm. low angle on the bridge? Yep. And uh, you don't have to worry about splaying out your legs and doing all that crazy stuff you do with a tripod. And plus, nobody will stop you because nobody cares. You know why? Because it's not a tripod. <laughs> It's not a tripod. And That's it fits right. anywhere. We're going to give away the Platypod Ultra, which is right here, and its bigger cousin, the Platypod Max. How many times in your life have you said, have heard somebody say to you, no tripod, sir? The last time I set up a tripod. I was in New York That's City. Right. I set up a tripod, and they were this. right on me. Yeah. Right. But I, I use this everywhere. I use this in St. Patrick's Cathedral, where tripods, their security guards are looking at it, and they're like, yeah, whatever. Hey. <laughs> It's not a tripod. You put three legs on it, everybody freaks out. Yeah. Anyway, but we'll be giving away all of that a little later on in the show, so stick around for that. We have a couple of shout-outs besides Sarah. Yes. We've got uh, Warren. Oh, we're, we were for all over. Everybody in the world is that watching gone. today. Yeah. We got Warren from Signal Hill, California. Deb says, hi, all. Luz says, hi, from London. Bashiv says, Bavesh. Bavesh says, Bavesh. hey, yeah. all, from Mumbai, India. Hello in India. Hello, Pernil uh, says hello from Denmark. And then Stephen Barnes, hello from Belfast, Northern Ireland. Steve says hi from the UK. And we have a comment here from Rhodes and Brito. They said, Jeff. Rhodes and Brito, a client Jeff, of mine. They're, you're one of your clients? Yes. They said, Jeff, you shot Walker Middle School and Florida a and University for Rhodes and Brito. And so did. many more fantastic jobs. Cool. Thank you for that. Well, doggone. That's nice. Jeez. Hey, Jack that. Resnicki. 
Hey, Jack. Jack, all right, <laughs> Jack. I just talked to Jack yesterday. How much do we love Jack? I love Jack. He's the greatest Jack, guy. Yeah. He's such a good photographer. He makes me sick. Makes me sick. It makes you sick. Anyway, good to have you here. Dalton's here. I've been talking to Dalton today. Uh, <laughs> we've been in the in the Kelby One community going back and forth. Brian from Iowa. Uh, Joe's from Houston. We could go on and on. AVN says, hi, hello, Gridsters. All right. That's more like a hello. Hello. Grid Nation. That is. Thank you. Yep. All right. Let's... Let's uh, let's move on. Let's see who else we got here today. Let's take a look at the next set of images. Here we go. One. Here's the first one. All the same photographer again. There'll always be the same photographer. The three three shots. Here we go. And this third one. There we go. So I'll I'll start. These are they're close. You're doing a lot of things right. Like, for example, this this shot right here, without the guy. The boat. Mm -hmm. The boat by itself would create an eerie, timeless, beautiful shot. Unfortunately, the guy... That's right. ...kind of kills the timelessness of it. And we can't always control that. I know, but there is a program. I don't know if you've there heard of it. <laughs> There is. And especially, <laughs> especially when you have the other side of the boat, you know how fast it would be to fix this? Let's take a look. Now, I, it's not going to be perfect what I'm going to do because I'm still learning Photoshop, but let me reopen it. I kind of did a bad job there. Let's try to open it here and hit open. And there we go. All right, let me resize my screen. Okay, resize it. All right. What I would do is take this side of the boat over here. Oh, look at that, can't even see my thing. And, pro and flip it, like put it up on its own layer. Flip it horizontally. And stretch it out now, just you'd a have, hair. You'd, you'd, have you'd have to do some, yeah, you'd have to work with it a little bit, all right? Yeah. But, and then you'd have to mask, you know. Or just squint down a little bit. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of this. I mean, yeah, I'm giving like you, I'm giving, yeah, it looks like a jet ski. I'm giving <laughs> you, I'm giving you the 30 second, where it starts, not right. where it ends, kind of thing. I'm trying to get to the. What's so now you've just turned it in from a from an editorial type of a picture to a piece of art. Yeah, to art. Yeah. Correct. Exactly. Why well, want it? Why well, want it erased? Like my mask. The right layer. Let's see. I only have one layer, and my. Brush. I don't know what's going on. I'll, I, you know what? I'll, I'll just. Uh, it won't. It's it's Photoshop just being weird. I'll fix yeah. it. I'll quit it, and it fixes itself. Anyhow, but. <laughs> But but th that's not the bigger picture. This is that's just a little thing. It was some other the other images, and I want to point this out. So let's look at this image, and please take this in in the I mean this this is not a bad photo, but it's also not a good photo. You know what this is? You were walking through a market and you went click. The woman's not only is she not doing anything interesting, she looks like annoyed. Just generally, like, so, the, I, 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 there's nothing, this is, it, it's, I hate to, it's a nothing picture. So, for, for me, it's, I, I'm distracted with all the other people in the subject, if, uh, in the picture itself. If it was just that woman in, a, in the market and you didn't, you didn't have all those other people doing activities behind there, it might help it a bit. But it's still not going to make but it a good still picture. still not, yeah. Because you know what it is? She's not doing, there's nothing interesting. And I know what you're thinking, like, oh, look at all these vegetables and they're colorful and stuff. Mm -hmm. You'd have been better off to shoot the vegetables. If you'd have got in tight on those vegetables, you could have had a really interesting shot. But, I mean, she's sitting on a plastic chair. There's a plastic bag beside her. She's not giving you anything as far as expression or emotion. If she sure. was yelling at you or screaming or pointing her <laughs> finger, it would have been a really interesting shot. She might have gotten to that point, actually. But, I mean, she might have, but there's just... It, 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 it's it's not there's nothing happening here the next shot is another one that's close the you're in the right place the lighting is kind of sketchy on him because you've got like dappled light coming from behind and stuff you've cut off his fingers which is always bad in any kind of portrait and i so uh, crop it down but crop it down so we don't focus on, on that that right. part of it make it more of a three-quarter headshot type of a thing and you might. Well, that's already better right there. Wait till it zooms in here on, on your screen. My our screen is lagging today. Yeah. See, I I'm 
I like that better uh, than what the better. original way was. Better. Um, I'd still like to see it a little dark. It, 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 there was a, little, a couple highlights and stuff that are way too bright. Yeah, like uh, the over Kubota here, in the, the back. stuff in the back, yeah, exactly. all that kind of stuff. His and we face could, take could care used of that. to be a whole lot brighter. But but here's the thing. I I think, like, you're you're obviously a pretty good photographer, and you're going to some really... Uh, well, it's way over. I'm looking at your screen versus my screen. Your screen looks bad. And let's desaturate that just a hair, because that, that painting over it made it a little bit. All right. So I think that's a little better on the face. Let me just show you right. There we go. I think that's a little mm -hmm. better. But here, oh, it took a lot of that orange cast off too. Yeah. It, it looks a little more natural now. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So you're on the right track. So don't don't be bummed out by this because. But all three of these are like they're all close. They're like this is almost a really good shot. Mm -hmm. This one's. You need more than just a woman just sitting there. Yeah. And, and you know what? Somebody sent me a link, and they asked me to look at their images the other day. And I looked through them, and it was all just kind of like, well, yeah, we see that every day when you walk mm -hmm. by. It, it wasn't anything that makes you go, oh, now that's interesting. And so... You and I had a nice, yeah. uh, nice conversation in Hartford a couple weeks back about street photography and, and uh, just really how difficult it can be. Oh, uh, yeah. So... People think it's get easy because really you shots. just walk out your your door and start it's... snapping. But to make to make a picture where people go, well, ooh, that's where where is that? Or ooh, that's interesting. Or that's beautiful. Or how did you capture that? Right. But if it's just people like this woman sitting there, no one says, oh my gosh, how did you get that? That's amazing. That's just a wow picture. No, it, it's if you were standing there with your iPhone, that's exactly what you would get. Mm -hmm. If you just walked up, picked it to your eye, went click. All right, we're gonna take a short break. When we come back, something else. No, we have more images. We have more stuff. Stick around. It's me and Jeff. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Just hanging out. Just hanging out on the grid. Hanging out on the grid. A couple of really big benefits of being critiqued. One, it tells you what you're doing well. Two, it tells you what you're not doing well and areas to focus on. I think three, it tells you potentially how the stories you're attempting to tell are being seen and shared by others, including stories you maybe even didn't know you were telling. And then the last thing I think it does is the more you get critiqued, the better you are at critiquing others, and then you can help other people really move their photography forward as well. And really that's what this class was about, was taking an established methodology that has been in existence for almost 70 years now that we know works. So to bring that kind of structure down here, I think is gonna be helpful for people who are soliciting feedback to know how to ask for it. And for those people giving feedback, to give them the tools to feel like they can really respond to anybody who's looking around. I'm Daniel Gregory, come and check out my latest class on kelbyone.com. Compositing, especially doing this kind of family portraiture, is taking it to the next level. How do you make something impossible possible and believable? Compositing seems really hard. How do you make that you know, look real? This is really about making something more imaginative. You're taking your imagination and turning that into the photograph. Uh, it's not that hard, especially when you're doing something like this class, where it's all in frame. Then it becomes more about technique. You get variety, you overshoot more than you need. Then it becomes a formula of set steps where, okay, you make a basic selection, you paste in place, do some masking, and it's not using a whole lot of advanced tips to make things very seamless. So that's the idea behind this class, is making the impossible possible and making it really fun the entire time. I'm Brett Malley. Please come take a look at my latest class on compositing on kelby1.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. Hey, we're back. Scott Kelby here with Jeff Leinbach, and uh, we are looking at... Uh, we looked at another image while we were on break. I looked at the next image. I, I peeked and went ahead. And shame, shame, I, shame. It, unfortunately, it is the exact same thing that we were just talking about. Let's take a look at three images real quick on screen. Here we go. These are sent in by our readers. One, two, three. So, and I'm not being mean, but let's, I'm going to tell you what we see here. Oh, look, a woman checking her cell phone. That's hard to find pictures of that. People in a busy train station, in the busiest train station probably in the world, mm -hmm. and a guy walking his dog. So let's, let's see what we can do to improve these. 
except for this one. Let's move on to if we can. <laughs> this one. So what we what we could have done here is just gone to a long exposure. Long exposure. And had those people kind of blurring through the screen. Yes. And then you've got an image that's kind of classic. Um, we've seen it a lot, but it works, and it's kind of cool. So go back, set your tripod up, oh, you and get a long point. exposure on that, and uh, you might have something there. Now, that's Grand Central Terminal in New York City, and to use a tripod... You have oh, to. Oh, you got to use. I used the platypod. Use the platypod. No problem. Exactly. I set a platypod right up. Policeman looks at me. Yep. Winks. Moves right so, on. So, so look at look at how they staged this. Even if you did that, what we just talked about with the uh, moving people, look at look at the composition that they've created here. It's it's kind of nice. I see triangles yeah. happening. Yep. You've got the you've got basically three points. You've got the the podium or the kiosk, then you've got the uh, ticket stand, and then you've got the other corner here. So you've got a nice flowing image. Just get the people flowing and you yeah. have something. Yeah, and without it, 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 so what you're doing here is, it's, it's not art, it's, you're just basically saying, I was there. So you gotta do something else because anybody that walked onto that staircase and pulled out their phone and took it. Just making them black and white doesn't make them art. And I know that a lot of people use that as a, if I make it black and white, all of a sudden it looks like photography. If, if you looked at the color versions of these, they would literally be, they're snapshots. I'm not trying to be mean, but someone's got to tell you, this is, you need to go look at people that are really good at street photography because I'm, I'm going to give you an example. Jay Maisel. I was thinking that same thing. <laughs> Jay Maisel wrote a book that you need to get. It's called Light, Gesture, and Color. Now, we, we, we helped produce the book, so I'm not trying to push our own book, but it's called Light, Gesture, and Color. What, what he says is, your photo has to have something, something great in it. It either has to have really interesting light. Now, he is a street photographer, mm -hmm. strictly. Is there interesting light? As you look at it and go, well, she's not doing anything, but oh my God, the light is amazing. The gesture. Are they doing something unusual? Like, well, I've never seen anyone hold their phone like that. If she was walking and she's holding her phone like this, that's an interesting picture. If she's doing something interesting with her phone, it's interesting. If if the people in, in, the, in here, if there was amazing light, if there were beams of light coming in, it was dark and there was these amazing beams of light, you would have that. Or if you have color, if there's this amazing red brick wall and that guy's wearing a yellow shirt and a blue hat, you would go, wow, that, the subject is color. None of these pictures, they're just, I was walking down the street and I took a picture. Yeah. Now, is your exposure good? Yep. Yeah. Do you know how to run your camera? Yep. So forget worrying about your camera gear. It's now time to study the work of street photographers. If you're going to do street photographer photography, it's not just random shots of people. Now, you will take random shots of people, <laughs> but the ones that you will actually show, it has to, you have to make someone look and go, oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, look at that. Can I tell you what? A person looking at their phone better be a hell of a picture because yeah. everyone's looking at their phone. You go to any city anywhere, the whole town's walking around looking at their phone, sitting there looking at their phone, leaning against the wall, look at their phone. You're going to bring me another picture of somebody looking at their phone. You see where this is going. You got to up your game. Yeah. Go and you look, look. Yeah, I, and, and, and Jay's a great example. I mean, you look at you look at his work, and you it, even though it's the simplest little thing that he just photographed, there's something about that image that mm -hmm. makes you go, "Wow!" And and it and it does. Even though it's it's a simple little thing that anybody could have taken a picture of. A lot of times, it's the gesture. It's a gesture. A lot of times, yeah. they're doing yep. some exactly. little thing that you just go, oh my gosh, that's so unusual. Mm -hmm. Or it's the light. There's a reflection of light or a hit of light, you know? Right. A friend of mine did a series in Manhattan, and he got up in the morning before everybody and shot these shots with a Hasselblad. Uh, you can't believe the shots he got in the morning. And it, and it is light. It's light. He mm -hmm. chose light. It's yeah. not gesture. It's right. not that. But... You got some shadows of people, and they are okay. so interesting. And you look at the shots, and you're just like, wow. Look at your shots and go, am I making people wow? Are these wow street shots, or are these just I was standing there shots? Right. You got the camera stuff down. Now let's move on to, like, really making, making great shots. All right. Cool. So uh, let's uh, roll on. Let's see. Let's look over here. Um, we got a Renee. Renair is high from Germany. 
Yay, Rainier. 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 Hi from Germany. Got some people coming from a long way away. Yeah, Waldemar from Poland. Dan's here from Southport, North Carolina, Brunswick Islands. Yeah. And Gary from the Philippines says hi. Jacob from the Isle of Skye. The Isle of Skye. Eula from Finland. Victoria Pavlov from all the way in Atlanta. Hey, Victoria, I don't know if you were watching earlier, but... We gave you away. No, you're... We your were going class. to give away your, <laughs> your awesome time. Class. We gave your time we away. We gave your time away. <laughs> Gary's here from the Philippines. Okay, let's take a look at the next shot here. Okay. I think we're one for three. I think we're one for three. Yep. All right, which one do you like best? I like the last one. Me too. Hands down. Yeehaw. Did you notice this one's out of focus? Yes. If it's out of focus, it goes in the it trash. It doesn't work. So that's, yeah. we're not even going to talk about that one. It's not, if the focus isn't sharp, it's a goner. You know what's terrible? I had such a great basketball shot once. I had this just amazing dunk, and the expressions of everybody were dunk. <laughs> But it focused not on the player, but right behind the player on the first row of them. <laughs> I wanted to put it in my portfolio so badly, and it's just... I have hundreds of those, too. Thousands they're of just, those. It's just <laughs> off, and it just it kills the shot. True. Uh, this is really nicely done. The colors are beautiful. Uh, you left there's enough room for the bird to be not feel, to feel caged into the shot. And uh, that, that's just really nice, and... This is a nice sunset. It's easy to get suckered into a sunset because the sunsets are so Correct. beautiful. Yeah, that, that color takes over and uh, kind of lures you in at first, and then you start looking at it, and it uh, changes yeah, things. Yeah, it's just, it's... It's a cool moment. If you had something great in that foreground, something really interesting, not just a shrubby bush kind of tree thing, like yeah. if that had been the skyline of the city or something really interesting. Now, see, I would stand there and look at that, I wouldn't necessarily take a picture of it. There yeah. are there are, there <laughs> are so many times that I I leave my camera down and I just say this is an enjoyable mo enjoyable moment, but is there really a picture there? And I just leave my camera down and enjoy the moment and put it in my mind as as uh, an experience in a moment. Interesting. All right, let's take a look at another one. But but not bad. I mean, this obviously the photographers that we're looking at today. You notice they're, they're not like exposure problems. No. They're not like, I don't know how to use my camera. Yeah, the technical right? issues have been very yeah, few. Yeah, very, very yeah. few today. Very few. Let's look at another one real quick. Oh, we already looked at that one. Let's look at, uh, let's look at this one. I think we're one for three again. Which do you like? I don't know that one. I don't know that one. That one. Yes. Yeah. So there's a couple of things going on here, and I'll, I'll take the first crack at it. Unfortunately, the flags are killing this shot. Mm -hmm. Now, the flags that are killing this shot, there's three that are killing it. This one on the left, top left, top right. And I, I know that you were using this for the device. Mm -hmm. When this one's going, like, right into Lincoln's <laughs> mouth, it's, that's not good. This no. is one where I see what you're trying to do, and I commend you for trying to come up with a cool frame. And you almost pulled it off. Almost. You were, yeah. but I. So I do commend you. I see what you're trying to do, but it the the top two are are. This could have been really nice without the top two flags, and you would have been in a different position, and maybe you wouldn't have had that flagpole going into Lincoln's mouth like it's a cigar. Exactly. If you had that the two flags, uh, the two second from the bottom or second from the top flags going up into the through the trees right there and stopping there. That would be cool. And then they basically, you get the base of the, or the, the roof of the image itself being the sky and the, and the Mount yeah, Rushmore exactly, itself. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So close. Yep. This is just lovely. I love the way the bridge leads you over and, the, yep. and it's very nicely composed. This is a really yep. nicely done shot. Exposure's great. And yeah. the light's good. And then the light's bad. This yeah. is also ni fairly nicely Co composed. Compo compositionally, this one's very nice. True. But it, yeah, it screams the middle of the day to me. Yeah, the middle of the day, unfortunately. It's just, you're at super harsh light. And, yeah. and it's unfortunate because what happens is you're on a tour and, and that's the time you yeah. end up in that spot. Exactly. Now, what, what's nice here is you actually do have something in the foreground here, which is that bridge. 
And this one is lacking a foreground element. Mm -hmm. You're kind of starting, you know, at the edge of the water. Something that if you could have put something in that that closer foreground, I think would, would have been helped. But nothing's going to override the fact that you took it at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So that's kind of bad. Yeah. But good photographer. This, this, this middle shot is outstanding. So yep, I agree. That's really something to be proud of. That looks, frame it, put it on the wall. Frame it, yeah, frame it, put it so on the wall. Very, yep. very nicely done. Hey, um, real quickly, we're, I'm going to get another image up here. So yesterday I did a uh, webcast, a live webcast for Kelly One Pro members, and it was on how to build an Adobe Spark page from your trip. So like you go to a trip, you come back and you build a Spark page. And what I told people was grab 25 of your images, right? Grab 25 of your images and then follow along with me. We'll build a page together. And uh, one of the people that were watching, uh, I saw in the Kelby One forums, he, he did it. He, uh, Larry Grace, who I know who Larry is. Look, he built this yesterday while we were doing the webcast. Uh, he's out uh, in, wow, uh, where is it, Wisconsin? Show. Where's the, the big air show? Somewhere out that away. Oshkosh? Oshkosh, Wisconsin, yeah. 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 So anyway, but the Thunderbird's there. And scroll down if we can see that real quick. And he did a beautiful job on this. There we go. Look at how Spark oh, wow. makes your images so big and beautiful. And then we looked at how to build a gallery. You can scroll through them quicker than that. There you go. And look, nice. he's got the ceremonies and all the stuff. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of pomp and circumstance that goes along with the Thunderbirds. And uh, I think he did a really nice job on this. And he put it together in the class. I told everybody, grab 25 images. We'll build it together. Very nice. And you can ed ed enter your text later. And I, th I think he did a great job. So congratulations to Larry Grace, who, uh, look at that. I love that. Right? Good he's job, he's a really good photographer. Though. He's a, an aviation photographer. And he's just there. Look at the thumbs up. You knew he was going to get that shot. Oh, look at that. Ooh, Warthog. There's a Warthog back there, right? I love that Warthog. All right, anyway, but uh, that was from yesterday. If you're a Kelby One Pro member, we archive all of these webcasts. You can go watch it uh, online. Let me grab another image real quick here on the, uh, oh, yeah, on the member's website. Here we go. This will, oh, oh, it's time for a break. We're going to sure take a break. It says that. There it is, right there. Sorry. It's time for a break. And uh, well, well, uh, let's uh, take one. We come back, we'll look at, at the next, some next images. I don't think printing has ever been more important than it is today. I think people are surprised by the power of Lightroom's printing. Uh, from Lightroom 1.0, the first time I started printing in Lightroom and realized how powerful it is, I'd never printed in Photoshop again. I don't want people to get surprises when they get their print. I don't want them to look at it, and I don't want it to look too dark. I don't want to look to have the colors off. I don't want to have it wrong. So I, I really focus on how to get predictable prints every single time. And it's really nuts and bolts. It takes you through all the things. We're going to talk about how to deal with banding, how to do soft proofing, the misconceptions, all this kind of stuff. And we're going to talk about sharpening. There's capture sharpening, creative sharpening, output sharpening. you got to do them all if you really want to get that legendary sharpness that you see in other people's prints. If you've never printed with Lightroom's print module, you are going to fall in love with it. This class is going to take you from beginning to end and show you exactly how to make beautiful prints in Lightroom Classic. Why is this class important? It's important because if you don't learn the business side of photography, then you're not going to excel. What we're teaching is business basics. And so if you are a photographer, if you are an artist, if you have a desire to start a business in any way, this class is for you. They wonder why they're not getting any clients and they're not marketing themselves. You have to learn who the who and the what and the why, and then you have to do the work and market yeah. yourself. There are so many really, really talented artists that go out of business all the time, and they don't go out of business because they're not good at their art. They go out of business because they don't understand business. And so if you want to turn what you're doing into a career that is sustainable over the long term, you absolutely need to understand how to build a brand um, and then how to use that brand in your marketing and everything you do. I think that this class is for anyone who wants to actually make this into something that's a real career. I'm Elena S. Blair. And I'm Sandra Cohn. And come check out our class on kelbyone.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hello. My name is Scott Kelby, but that doesn't matter. Hey, well, well, welcome back. Real quickly, uh, Rocky Nook is doing a sale on my books, 40% off my books. Go to Rocky Nook Publishing and rockynook.com. Use the code SKELB, 
S K E L B. 40 and you get 40 percent off of any of my books also can i give a shout out for a book that's not one of my books i don't even know if it's raw from rocky nook rick salmon wrote a very cool book it's called the route 66 photo road trip book and it, it's not a it's not a how-to book he just puts some tips and stuff in there rick can't help himself but it's really about <laughs> like if you want to go and do route 66 here's the things to take photos of and here's some tips for taking them and it's it's really good so if cool. you get a chance it's i don't think that i don't think it's from rocky nook i think it's from a different publisher but still we love rick sam and his book is great i have a copy of it it's we called do. the route 66 photo road trip from rick salmon i am going on a workshop with rick salmon later in october to fossil rim in texas i'm really looking forward to it yes not fossil rim fossil rim itself yep all right looking forward to seeing you rick all right well there you go let's uh real quickly take a look at uh some images there's a question here let me woody Woody scott's question has been up there for quite a while and it says it says scott it's directed to scott but i'll take over and, and get this one out of the out of the way here woody scott says no it's just woody is saying scott do you it's not woody scott okay do you <laughs> resize images to fit within what within what were considered print standard ratios four by five five by seven eight, eight by, by ten, ten etc right, yeah. etc oh you're asking me that question well yeah because it's woody is asking no, Scott, I, yeah, do yeah. you? Yeah. So, Woody, what I <laughs> what I would prefer to do, like I use a couple of online labs, and of course, when if I'm making them in the house on my my printer, I've got a number of printers. If I'm using uh, those, I try to to print to non-standard sizes, like digital sizes. You go to like Mpix or Bay Photo, mm-hmm. they'll they'll have the old, you know, what would you call it, an eight by ten, and then they have. Uh, whatever the next one is it's like a nine by 13 or whatever the digital size is right. they have the digital sizes if i'm going to go if and i do this very rarely if i'm going to print full bleed this is interesting okay i'm, if I'm going to print edge to edge printing then i want to use the actual digital size correct so it okay. doesn't cr- right. doesn't change my composition right if i'm going to put a white border around it, which is what I would normally do, because for a fine art print, you usually want a white border right. around it. In that case, I leave plenty of white space and it doesn't matter, I'm gonna print to a 17 by 22 or whatever. So you use the same format that you shot and keep I your leave composition, the, I which always is what leave, I do too. Right, I always yeah. leave, but I just wanted to make that distinction. Mm-hmm. Edge to edge, I'm gonna choose digital size paper. I'm not gonna to conform to the, the old print sizes. So unless, I, correct. Unless you want to frame and then you're screwed. Correct. Well, that's true. To this day, you go to Target, and they're like, yeah. nope, it's 8 by 10 Yeah, you, you got to fit into their formats. Stupid but, Target. But they are coming around. I do a lot of framing, and I do I, I can do a, a 13, 19 print in a nice frame, and it's it's a standard size now. Uh, the only time I, I print in those formats is if I'm doing, like, an event or something, and they want prints of it afterwards, and they say, okay, I want so many four by sixes or so many five by sevens, then I'll print to those. But typically, I typically I stay away from that because yep. it changes my um, composition completely. Because you got to crop, you, you're cropping something out of it to make it fit to those formats. Hey, look, we have, we have some. Uh, I hope that answers your question, Woody. We have some celebrities in here. Eric, the real Rocket Man, Kuna just says, "Hey, <laughs> the hey, Shark Eric. Pixel." From D.C. All right. Christina Shirk says, see you soon, Scott. And Mimo Madani says hello. So he's, depending on where Mimo's at, he could be in Venice. He could be in Toronto. But he's maybe, somewhere. Maybe he'll send back. And, and said, hey. Terry White. Terry White <laughs> hey, is right. in the house. Hey, Terry. Woo, woo, Terry White. <laughs> all right. Good to have you here, Mr. White. Adobe evangelist for 21 years and just one of the coolest guys anywhere on the planet. Absolutely. All right, we're going to look at some more images. We're going to blast through these because we don't have a whole lot of time. So let's blast. Ready? Go. Here's a shot. Here's a shot. Here's a shot. What do you think? No, I'm sorry. Just kidding. (laughs) Well, these are nice. Yeah, I like them. Got a, this is an interesting horseshoe bend shot. Photographers so, risking their life and stuff. Yeah. So you see so many shots of, of this, and I've, I've been there dozens of times, um, trying to find unique angles. And some, there's sometimes I walk up to it and I said, I'm not going to shoot the standard shot. I've already got that. So that's what I really appreciate about this image. Um, it, it shows scale. 
Yeah. Because there's people in it. It's got it's got your your light rays. The light's good. They shot it at F22. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Um, no, but that's, you that's have, what makes those right light rays. Those rays that, look there's great. A, there's always an exposure problem with this this image. Uh, knowing knowing the area and, and the um, the structure, it, there's always an exposure problem with it. And I think they did a great job capturing it. Uh, even light throughout. I like it. I like it a lot. Good job. We have a question from Melanie Kern for Villa. Melanie, how the heck are you? Can I tell you Melanie's story real quick? Sure. So Melanie, Melanie asked the question, how do you add the white border? Mm -hmm. I add mine in Lightroom. I just go to the print module. Yeah. I go to the margins and I add a white thing. But I have to tell you Melanie Kern for Villa's story. So you may or may not know, Melanie won one of our gallery uh, things, you know, our, our art gallery. Do you know okay. about our gallery yep. thing? Yeah, I remember. So she, she won one of them. She has a beautiful... Uh, floral prints mm -hmm. and on the black background yeah on the yeah. black background mm -hmm. that, that's yeah. her stuff so she comes in the gallery and she's you know sees all these images and she's like overwhelmed we're all overwhelmed we're all like you know tear. and and she's like this is the first time i've ever seen my images in print mm -hmm. and so when i was doing the photoshop world keynote i talked about the power of the print why printing was more maybe more important today than it's ever been and i referenced melanie and like how it you, you know did. i recall that and yes. you know what she sent me a print this week. Sweet. And it was it was <laughs> it was my favorite image of hers. And she remembered me saying when when you're a gallery showing how much I love this particular one. Mm -hmm. And I got a big box this big, flat. I opened it up. It was from Bay Photo. Mm -hmm. I opened it up and it was her image. And I was like, seriously, I had tears in my eyes. I'm like, <sighs> very nice. It's like, you know, it was amazing to see, you know, someone who had never seen one of her prints before, mm -hmm. and now she's giving her prints as gifts. And it looked beautiful. I mean, it was five serious. I'm getting tears now. It was absolutely cool. beautiful. Thank you, Melanie. What a! I, I tell you, there, there's something about giving a print. Yeah. There's something. It, there's just. It's just. It's hard to explain, but it is. It means more, and it really has. It really has a value. So, thank you very much, Melanie. Um, let's look at the other image. I mean, this, I think this photographer. They're pretty. The only thing I would say here is, your sky is kind of icky. I would maybe show less of the sky. Maybe just put that horizon line a little higher. It's almost in the center. Yeah, just, you could darken it down too. Just to yeah. use a grade eight, uh, but I mean, we're, grade neutral density. And we're, just, we're just picking on there. Yeah, we're picking. And I like your fake uh, reflection in the lighthouse. It's all right. It's all right. And this is just a cool shot. Yeah. The only thing I would say here, I think you know, would make this shot stronger, is to get rid of all those bushes. I think so. You're right. Getting rid of the bushes, so those, because then then you just have the person. You're not distracted by them. They're not adding anything to the shot. All there are is is uh, is uh, taken away. So I'm assuming Death Valley. But, but yeah, but really good photographer. Yep. Goodness gracious, we're having cool. some. It's great to see such great photographers today. I'm 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 really excited. Let's take a look. We're gonna have to go kind of lightning round here. So All right. let's take a look. Well, this is a yeah. good photographer too. Yeah, no um, doubt. This is really nicely done. Yeah. That's just, it's so isolated, simple and subtle. You know, when you simplify the image, it's the simplification. And look, look at the separation between the flower and the background. Beautifully yeah. done. The baby duck, come on. Yeah, you, you, yeah we, we got to give it up for baby duck. Yeah, baby duck. Yeah. The only thing I would do with this, I'd make it more, more orange or more yellow. Yeah, the color balance a little but bit. But still. Yep. And... This one is my least favorite, but it's it's nicely done. I mean, it's well framed. This is a good photographer. It's in focus. Very nicely yeah, yeah. done. Not really much to tell you there. Just keep up the good work, pretty much. <laughs> Those are good ones for a lightning round. Yep. All right. Let's see what else we have here. Lots of dress, and in the worst harsh daylight, and your subject still doesn't look bad. Mm -hmm. That's well carried out. Yep. I just nice. want to know if she walked all the way out there with that red dress, dragon, and all that material behind you know what it. i would have done if i was there though i would have picked up the dress and had some assistants or friends throw it in the air oh that would have been cool that would have, that would have been that, that uh, red against that blue sky yeah yeah. Ooh, yeah 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 there you go you can also get a little tighter in here i think this shot could be a lot more dynamic because you're not far enough away to do that like the big epic thing mm -hmm. so why not like kind of go in here a bit and and get more out of that that scene here yeah so you get yeah, little, there you yeah. go. All right, but that's uh, that's just nitpicking. One, just nitpicking. Yep. Yeah, this is nice stuff. Um, I, I like your fake, fake, fake reflection. Uh, I would darken the fake reflection a little bit, but still good. 
Oh, that's oh nice. speaking of. Speaking of, <laughs> of flowers, and that's nicely done. Flowers on black background. Very nicely I done. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Good job. Boy, we got some. You know, those, you know, are, those are three individual Where are our bad too? photographers? They're all pretty good know. today. Oh, great. Here we go. Ooh. Here we got. Oh, that's, we got nice pictures. That's uh, something up your alley. Now, you have a whole series of these. Now, I would say this. The buildings are leaning, and I really like it. <laughs> Because uh, it's it's you're not doing architectural photography. No. If this was an architectural shot, architectural photographers would oh you didn't straighten your verticals, and they would all be all kinds of not its purpose. But, but this is a travel shot, and so is Florence, Florence, Italy. And what does it have that you like, Jeff? Windows in the middle you can see through. Windows you can see through on the that silhouette bridge. part. Yeah, on the silhouette part. That's very nice. You know, Florence is very expensive. And there's more Florence. That's nice. Too. I like that. I just li I I like, like the that colors. best of all. I do too. Yeah. Boy, where's all the I bad photographers? Like We're having a hard works. time critiquing. We're supposed to say uh, this is bad. All right, street photographers. That's light. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, we said you got to have something? Yes. That's light. That's Florence. Ooh, the other photographer. I wonder if they Florence. were there together. That's an interesting That's London, shot. Right? Swing in London, yeah, it is. I that's like the Tower it. Bridge. I love and the, it swings. That's a double decker. Like the pendulum do. Double decker bus streaking through it. I love it. Double decker? Is that what it is? Yeah, okay, because there's a, a there's a reflection. No, you're well, right. It's a bus. Yeah, nope, yeah. nope. You're totally right. Doggone. Let me find Sweet. somebody bad before we take a break because we don't have much time. And we have our winner. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> you're in the right spot. You're in so the right spot yes. at so the wrong time of day. Yes. And you desperately desperately need a long exposure for this shot you need a neutral density gradient filter and you uh yeah this to make yeah, that water tilted. milky like the whole image is like you didn't you didn't straighten the horizon line the water doesn't look good and you're so there at the wrong time of day dawn or dusk i mean you went to the exact right place at the exact wrong time but it's crooked if it's crooked the rest goes down the trash this is not a bad shot, but you overcooked the sky. That's why it looks, it looks, uh, it looks overcooked. And this is cool. Mm. This is inside yeah. the um, what's it called? The the uh, I don't know not that the one. obelisk. It's the, the what? The Oculus. the Oculus. Thank you, Juan. Okay. Juan saves the day. Speaking of Juan, follow Juan on Instagram. He's almost to his thousand followers. So it's underscore Juan Alfonso on Instagram. He's so close. You could be next. Juan has been sharing some great shots. Look at the second one in the center. I'm so pissed that he got that shot. I was standing <laughs> with Juan when he was there, and he beat me to death on that <laughs> shot. I wrote him the other day when I saw this. I'm like, how did you? That's a perfectly timed and framed shot. Excellent job. I hate you, yep. Juan. <laughs> hate you, anyway, Juan. Anyway, <laughs> hate you, Juan. All right. Um, but you know what? I like, I like, your, th I like this shot. It's just the sky's over-processed. Go just back and pull it off. I like the shot. I like the shot. Wrong time, mm -hmm. right location. Okay. All right, a couple of real quick things. we got to wrap up because we're way out of time. Where do you go to win the stuff? Go to kelbyone.com slash contest and just... You have to tell us what you want to win. Your choices are Scott's new book, Platypod Ultra, which is the small one, Platypod Max, which is the big one, an hour private session with Victoria on digital painting or whatever, because she knows like all the Photoshop stuff really, really well. I think that's all the gifts. Oh, and Lens Pro to Go gift card for 50 bucks. Any one of those, you have to tell us what you want to win because we won't send you something if you don't. <laughs> so go and enter. Real quickly, uh, last week, my, my, my print class came out. My print class came out. It was on printing in Lightroom. I want to read you a quote real briefly. Somebody sent me today. Now, there's a little bit of bragging in it. I'll let you read it because it's, it's bragging and I don't want to. I read it on the teleprompter. Okay, yeah, read it here. Okay. OMG, I'm not even religious, but I keep bowing my head, folding my hands, and thanking the universe for Scott Kelby and, how, and the How to Make Beautiful Prints course. I just printed 20 8x10s and one 17x22 without even one throwaway. Wow. I, I'm, wow's in there, but I'm saying wow too because um, when you can start printing without one throwaway, 
That's yeah. pretty good. I'm very, I'm really psyched about that class. I want to get people printing and I, I talk about reasons why and stuff. So, oh, Melanie just wrote it. She goes, I'm so happy you motivated me to print. Thank I love you, printing. I print constantly. I know you I, do. I, you I printed print some constantly. of my stuff. I did. I You're printed a, a whole ton of your stuff. Yeah. Well, uh, guys, we have completely run out of time, but that doesn't mean we don't love you. Jeff, where can people we go learn you. more about you? Uh, at jlphoto-graphic.com. Again, it's jl. Well, there's my website right there. <laughs> so it's uh, JL Photo hyphen. Make sure you get that hyphen in there, graphic.com. That's it. Well, Jeff, I cannot believe it was your first time on the grid. You were so <laughs> awesome. I, I'm, I'm really stunned. Now, I'm leaving immediately to go to the Apple store, and I, and I, I want to show you why. Clumsy. Clumsy's why. Yeah, I want to show you here. I cracked my screen to death. Juan's going to come in. I, I dropped my phone. Hey, Look at no. that. Oh, it's cracked to death. So I have an appointment at the Apple store in yep. like 25 minutes. So I'm going to drive there hastily and get it done. Uh, Jeff, thank you very much. Christina, over on the comments, Christina. thank you for hey, moderating man. today. Appreciate it very much. Thank all of you for watching and joining There's us. Juan. And uh, you, don't forget to go follow Juan underscore Juan Alfonso on uh, Instagram. It is perhaps the greatest of all Instagram accounts out there. We'll see you next time. Take right. care, everybody. Adios. At one point or another, every picture I have with me, what accessories and